Welcome to the RVA Returners Podcast, your weekly source for all things Final Fantasy TCG. What am I trying to say? Like, gives them a little bit more of a luster if you're doing a tournament. It's like, well, top four gets this, winner gets this, or, you know, what? Granted, I, we, I, I still come from the camp where, you know, if you're building your community, I would like everybody to get promos. But I'm fine with, like, being a promo behind for something like that. But then, like, the new promo, all right, when the, now this is new, as we get them fresh, you know, give them out to the top cuts in the weeklies or whatever. But, you know, that's fine. And you know what else is fine, Adam? Us being back for the next episode of the RVA Returners podcast. Folks, welcome. I'm your host, Chris Adams. With me, as always, Adam Lane. Say hi to everybody. Hello. <laughs> it is early Sunday morning here, right before 8 o'clock. They've uh, changed my Sunday work schedule, so we're doing things a little earlier these days. But, uh, you know, we got a lot to talk about. The uh, community spoilers are in full effect. Um, you know, we've got Crystal Cup tickets going on sale soon. You know, we've got our spoiler coming out soon. Adam, Adam there's, there's, there's quite a bit to talk about, even in a week that would otherwise be kind of dry. Yeah, for sure. I mean, at this point, I'm kind of done with Opus 7. <laughs> So. Oh, dude, join the club. That's why last week our locals were just like, oh, I'm just going to play this. I'm, I I didn't realize this, but like none of the cards, I, none of my cards were from Opus 7. I, I had like two Opus 6 cards in there, and that was it. Yeah, I tried so. to play some fun stuff, and it still didn't do anything for me, but <laughs> it's fine. Yeah, I'm just, I'm, I'm ready for the new stuff. And you know what else I'm ready for, Adam? I'm ready for a place where I can go, where I can just get all the headlines. I can find out about all the things coming up. Do, do you? Do you, I, I got my my maps up, Adam. Do you know where that is? Where that place could be? I thought you were about to break into like the Cheers theme song. I thought about it, but close. We're talking about the news. All right. So first headline this week: uh, Tampa Crystal Cup tickets. Adam, they believe I believe they go on sale tomorrow at noon Eastern time. Is that correct? Yeah, RV posted. Um, that that's when they should go up. Uh, so it should be around that time, hopefully. Okay, and they're using the same, uh, I guess, the same site that they've used for other ones, where you go in, you like they did for Gen Con, like not Gen, no, not Gen Con, like they did for like Boston last year. I don't know. I think the the shops are in charge actually of the what, how they do it. So okay, I I don't think it's gonna be the same. So I think it's gonna be up to Sunshine Games. Gotcha. And just make sure you are you are online when you can to get those tickets because I have a feeling that they're going to go quick. Yeah, and I saw that uh, the guy that runs Sunshine Games actually posted and said that if they for some reason sell out really quick, that mm-hmm. that they will get with Square and find a venue and make sure everyone can attend, which is pretty. Sweet, that's awesome. So yeah, that is awesome because I, I, I think the I, I do think the Crystal Cups this year are going to be big, even, even with all the the controversy that was happening earlier, so, you know, around drafting and things like that. I think I think people still have the itch and they still want to play. So I don't I don't expect the I don't expect attendance to be hurt too terribly much, especially you know with Opus Eight you know right on the horizon. And uh, speaking of Opus Eight, uh, pre releases in what two weeks? Yeah, I, I believe so. It's coming up pretty fast. I mean, these spoilers are uh, going to be coming fast. I think because. I don't know how many of the community got spoilers, but uh, I mean, there's only a couple weeks left before we get to see the whole set. So, yeah, yeah, I want to say the weekend of the 16th is pre-release weekend, so that's coming up in a couple weeks. And uh, you know, speaking of events coming up uh, next weekend, I think is the first Crystal Cup and possibly the last big Opus Seven event uh, for the community. That's uh, Germany, correct? Yeah, the, I believe it's Ice Crystal Cup in like yeah, Dusseldorf, so. Germany. I think I'm saying that right. Uh, possibly, um, possibly. Yeah, so it's going to be really, I mean, really the only Opus 7 tournament that, like, yeah, ha- has a lot of weight to it. I guess, like, the Petit Cups were fun and the Grand Opens were fun, but this one, like, has a world's invite on the line. Exactly. So, so if you were if you were good at the Opus 7 meta, this this is your, and you were, you know, you're over in the EU, this is your chance to get over there and, you know, lock up that world spot. Yeah, interested to see if uh, Rob Phillips goes three for three. That'd be pretty sweet. Oh, dude, that'd be gross. That'd be uh, absolutely gross. I, 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 he could do it. He could definitely do it. And then, uh, you know, we got we got a fun little event happening here in a couple weeks. Uh, though on release weekend, which I believe is the twenty second, but we have an event happening on the twenty third. We actually have the. Remember a while back when we were trying to get a community day off the ground, a community day. I can't for some reason I can't say that. It's too early, um, but that we were trying to do that at pocket games and the store got closed. And then no, now, now we're, we're able to do this again. So we have a community day slash win a box happening on the 23rd down at jerseys, right? Yep. 
Yeah, I will definitely be in attendance for that. I don't know. I don't know if I'm going to play in like an event or just hang out and do gunslingers for people or what. I just, I just, I definitely want to do my part to make sure everybody has a good time down there. So uh, since we're not streaming, I'm definitely playing. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I can tell yeah, you that. Whatever. Yeah. No, for sure. And I think it's uh, you know it'll be Opus Eight Meta, so it'll be a chance to try new stuff. And uh, you know, maybe, you know, actually, I forgot. Yeah, maybe I will play because you and I are going to be uh, we're going to be playing that fun little deck we're working on. Yeah, I want to see how good it is. It's going to take a lot of testing, I think, to see. So. Oh, for sure. And what better way than to just dive right in? And um, so, and really, I mean, that's all a lot. You know, a lot of good stuff happening here. But really, like we said at the top of this, uh, community spoilers are coming in hot and they're coming in fast. And we've got about what ten spoilers total to go over today. Yeah, I think it's exactly ten. Yeah, man. So uh, let's let's go ahead and dive right in. We'll we'll backtrack to the end of last week where we got uh we they revealed two it was uh Rufus and Sherlota. Yeah. So I actually think both these cards are pretty decent. Um, yeah, I agree. Well, more, actually, put- better than decent. So Rufus is the lightning legendary, or the first uh-huh. one we've seen, I believe. Uh-huh. Uh, yep, so he's he a four CP forward, uh, category seven. Obviously, his job title is president of Shenra. But but he's a Turks card basically. Uh, he's a burst, yeah. um, and he's under curve. Right? I said like I, did, I believe I said five thousand power. Yeah, uh, yeah, he's severely under curve. But yeah, he does a lot. When he enters the field, you can search for any job Turks, a member of the Turks, and add it to your hand. So uh, first off of the bat, he can search backups, right? Yeah, which is huge. Um, not a lot of things can do that, and that's typically when you're the, when you're under curve like this bad. That's you know usually you're doing something, and searching a backup is a big deal. Uh, and we've already mm-hmm. seen a Turk backup. Yep. And then when Rufus or a job member of the Turks you control is put from the field into the break zone, choose an active forward deal of 5,000. I think the card's good. Yeah. Um, I think the card is actually really good, and I can't wait to see if... Uh, now, granted, he'll be as good as the support that he gets. Correct, yeah. It's going to depend on the uh, the other cards in this archetype, right? In this tribal. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's an aggressive card, because like, now all your Turks are swinging 5k up the curve, right? Absolutely. Absolutely, and um, I, I do think that it's one of those cards that also feels kind of future-proof. Like as they continue to print Turks in future sets, you'll always look back to Rufus and be like, "All right, well they've got a tutor." It's, it's like in Versus, right? When you had a team that had a tutor, and every time they would make new cards, it was like, "Oh yeah, I can search this out with this card." Yeah, and, and the big deal. I mean, it. the fact that it's it's any Turk because even yeah. if they print a backup Turk, he's going to be able to search them. Exactly, and that's huge. I, I think that's really, really huge. I think the card's good, and I can't wait to see what kind of support they give him. Because, like I said, he will be as good as the support that he gets. Yeah, my my only worry is that in this set, there's not going to be enough Turks for him to be good yet. <laughs> We're just going to get like one Rude and one Reno, and then I, I have Rufus. a. I don't know. I have this really funny feeling that that's yeah. We're going to get like three cards. Though to be fair. Would they have made this guy a legendary if they weren't going to get like a full set of support? I'd hope not. I, I I don't know though. You know, I mean, <clears throat> stranger things have happened. But yeah, I mean, if if they get like an actual deck, like if there's a Turks a full Turks deck that comes out of this, um, and a backup other than Rude, I think he needs one more backup to be really really good. Mm-hmm. And I still don't like Rude that much because his stuff is just too expensive. But I guess the fact that he's searchable is why they did that. Yeah, like if they can make like Elena a backup or something, or you know, uh, give forget uh, the Turks get like the treatment that uh you know they get a backup kind of like the Type Zero did that gives all Turks plus a thousand. I think that'd be fine too. Right. But yeah, I think the card's fine. I can't wait to see what kind of support it gets because I will be building a Turks deck. Yeah, I mean, I'll definitely try it, uh, and if it's good, I'll definitely play it. Anything Category Seven, I'm pretty pretty in on. Oh, for sure, it's always on your radar. And then the next one, um, I think this card's pretty absurd, actually, is uh, Sher- Sherlota. She's a 2CP backup. Um, so she's worded really, really bad. Uh, so I'll read her actual wording, and then I'll read her rotted wording. Mm-hmm. So her original wording uh, is, if you pay a CP, you may put Sherlota into the break zone to produce one CP of any element. You can dull Sherlota to pay the CP. Okay, so that's really confusing. Um, the first time I read it, I didn't really get it. Uh, but then I started to kind of see what they meant. And the yeah. only reason I know that is because I, I'm really I'm pretty aware of like how the cards in this game work. Mm-hmm. So at first I thought this was an auto, and I had to message like Matiski, and it's a field ability, mm-hmm. um, which is kind of weird. You know, it's, it's worded really poorly. And then they eroded it to this: um, you may put Sherlota into the break zone to produce one CP of any element in order to pay a CP cost. Mm-hmm. This can be in addition to Sherlota dulling for CP. Yep. Yeah, I think the card's really good. I th- any card that just like kind of becomes like a uh, like a lotus petal essentially just you can tap it then break it and 
it's a backup that can produce two at really any time. Yeah, so I, I think I think the card's good. Like, for me, really, yeah, really good. you can play her early and then like kind of forget about it till a little bit later. Um, she's yeah. gonna show her value, I think, later in the game. But there's other things you can do with her early in the game. Um, mm-hmm. On just off the bat, she makes any you could you could play this card in any win deck and play any two CP of any element and play it off just her. Yeah. Um, that's a big deal. If uh-huh. something like that ends up being good, like it could open up uh, in some some sort of combos with any kind of two CP. Um, you can now pay, play six CPs from hand without discarding off five backups. Uh-huh. Um, I think that's a big deal. Makes six CPs more playable, in my opinion, and we already have a win C- six CP that's pretty good. <laughs> Correct. I mean, yeah, I just think she has a lot. Her her ceiling is very, very high, and and she costs two CP. Yeah, I, I think the card's pretty nuts, and uh, I think the the one thing that we're missing, and like, this is the best thing about her, is that you can sing her name to the tune of My Sharona. <laughs> yeah, I guess that's true. So, just throwing that out there, so you'll find yourself doing it, don't worry. Yeah, Every she, time you play it, you'll find yourself singing it. But She's just, definitely going to go in Urion J decks. I'm interested to build, oh, like... for sure. Um... Maybe not so much like the Earthwind variant, where it was just like dot, the Dotaluma deck with Urian J and Phoenix in it, but go back to like the old like full on Urian J, the one that Ethan likes to play, like my old yeah, list. with the Phoenixes and Furion, like with yeah. just like the VV, like a legit fire splash. Because the fact that you can just like sit there and just keep recurring this with like Minor and like Minfilia and stuff like that too is huge. I think the card's good. I think the card's really really good. Yeah, so I, I'm it actually all the boxes. I definitely, I think she's a pretty insane combo card. Like she's gonna oh, allow yeah. for things. Uh, and, and she's going to allow you to play two colors and splash a third color as long as one of the colors win. I just, I, I hate that this card's a win card. That's my biggest thing. Like, yeah, I don't know why they put this in wind. I feel like this could have been like a fire card or something. That could have been I- anything. Or earth. I mean, it would have probably made more sense in earth, mm-hmm. but whatever. Yeah. yeah. Turns out, like you said, it, I like how you call it a combo card. Most, most things that like produce fast mana like that are just in any card game or like just straight up, like it's straight up a combo piece for something. So yeah, I, can't I mean, wait to see what people do with it. That's what this is to me. I mean, it does other things too, but to me, it, at its core, it's going to be like a combo enabler. Oh, for sure. For sure. Yeah. So I like it. I'm a big fan. And yeah, then we got the card of the week, uh, which is the second Earth Legendary. So we've seen both Earth Legendaries yep. now. Um, so uh-huh. it's Arden from Final uh-huh. Fantasy 15. He's a 7 CP forward, uh, 9K. Uh, Brave, Arden can't be broken. So his first two lines of text, very strong. Re- re- really strong lines of text there. Uh, then his last line of text is, at the beginning of your opponent's attack phase, your opponent selects one character he or she controls, and then he or she may put that card into the break zone, and if they do, Arden cannot block this turn. I, man, I think that ability. Now here's okay. So I, I was thinking about this yesterday. I, I I'm very on the fence with this card, so I'll lead with that. I think in some matchup, in some matchups, this card's gonna blow people out. But I think in a lot more matchups, that second ability is just so crippling to him. And like the, one of the best examples, I think we talked about it the other day was, all right, cool, go to my attack step. I guess I'll break Setzer and I'll Dolan freeze that guy and Arden can't block. I've literally just taken two of your guys out. Yep. If you don't, if you don't have an answer, I just win. And yep. also, <laughs> there, there's there's a little card called Yuri that's mm-hmm. still around. So yeah, and even even then, like you can now play stuff main one to play into his ability, break a backup, then yeah. sw- then swing through, and then re- so like say you're playing Mono Wind or something, mm-hmm. you can like. <laughs> Tap something, play something, then uh, break your, like, Alaria mm-hmm. main one, then go to your swings, then main two, play another Alaria, things like that. You can you can force this to be, a, like, heavily in your advantage. Um, right, and, and, and the fact that it says, it, it's the fact that Arden says character. Like, if it was, like, limited to, like, forward, oh, yeah. I, I think we'd have a, a completely different conversation. I, I think, think he'd be a lot be better. extremely powerful. But the fact that it's character, like against monster decks, all right, well, I'll just break this pot cat that's been sitting there for a while or, you know, whatever. Like, it's, I, I just think there's too much that stuff. Now, granted, on the plus side, he is a fight spell, just lightning rod. Like, this dude can hecaton chair all day long. But, you know, how much of that can you actually do? You know what I mean? Yeah, I mean, you're spending, you're already spending seven on the forward. And then you're, exactly. now, now you're spending more on spells for him to do things. Um, right. So, like, I, I agree with that for sure. 
and then like yeah, I mean, if if it said forward, he would definitely be a lot better. I still would be kind of medium on him, just because mm-hmm. there are so many things that are being played right now that just flat out answer him. And it, yeah. and I mean that that's just stuff that's being played right now. There's other stuff that's not even seeing play that also answers him, right? I mean, yeah, yeah. You can't play him on the board by himself because then you have to oh. worry about fan for it. Mm-hmm. Uh, any any Leviathan bumps, um, mm-hmm. while they're not super popular right now, feels really really bad because he costs seven. Uh, the, the one thing he does well is, like, if you don't have a great answer to him, he puts you on a clock, right? Like, mm-hmm. he's, he's swinging every turn. He doesn't care. Mm-hmm. Um, but, yeah, Yuri uh, just is going to dull and freeze him and move him out of the way. Or if he really, really wants to kill him, he can blank him. Yep. Um, Alicarnassus can blank him, too, and then sure. just... Yeah. Ice, Ice is just going to kindly ask him to move to the side, please, like, yes. every, every turn. Like, mm-hmm. it's... Yeah, I mean, and free- freezing, dulling and freezing this guy is, is going to be, like, backbreaking. Because you spent 7 CP, and they spent, like, 3. 2. Yeah. Or 2, yeah, to dull and freeze him. Like, mm-hmm. there's just, for me, there's just too many answers to him that are already seeing play to warrant mm-hmm. a 7 CP forward. Yeah, I, and, and like I said, in some matchups, like, if you're playing a matchup and they, like, drop him on, like, if you're playing a deck that that just doesn't have answers for his, this his type of card specifically and they drop him on, like, turn two or three, yeah, you're probably going to be in trouble. But I think so many more decks have answers for him, at least decks that you're going to see at, like, higher level play. I think I'm, I think Mono <laughs> Lightning is probably the best deck for him to fight against. I think they have the least amount of answers. They have to, they're forced to play, like, Amon or something to keep him, like, infinitely yep. gold. Yep. Um uh, other than that, I guess I'll stop. I'll like stop hating on him with with this. Uh, if you see this guy in your limited pack, you pick him immediately. Oh, windmill slam! That that yeah. dude is a pack one, pick one all day long. Yeah, I think you just win with this guy. Honestly, uh, yeah. I think he's that strong and limited. Yeah, because I don't think there's anything. I think the only uh, card that could even potentially do something, but you'd have to really get into a lot of blue for it to be a thing. Um. And we'll talk about that spoiler when we come to it, but yeah, no, I agree with that. I don't, th- I don't unless they got something really wild, or they go wide and they stupidly go wide and they play into a prompto because he can get removed from the game pretty easily. That's true. Yeah, they'd have to go like really <clears throat> wide. Prompto's right, the only thing they've shown in the set so far that kills him. Yep, correct. So, other so, than that, I don't, I don't think there's well, a way. Leviathan, but like I said, you have to. You have That's, to have a lot of blue. You yeah. have to have like a lot of blue for that. I, to work. I don't but, even see that being feasible, but maybe. <clears throat> Yeah, it, it's a hard maybe. Prompto is like the only thing so yeah. far. But no, I, otherwise I think the card, in Constructed, I think the card is pretty medium. Yeah, for sure. And then, yeah, the next card uh, was kind of exciting for a lot of people, I think, because we started to see this crop up of, like, community spoilers that were Final Fantasy VI cards. Oh, oh, that's so exciting to me. Oh, you have no idea. Like, you got excited for Rufus. All of these cards have me just so excited. Yeah, so it looks like we might get one of each of the the main character, or, like, you know, the part, main party characters. I don't know if that's true or not, for sure, but, I mean, we've seen, like, there's a few in this set of ten, so it makes me think maybe, maybe we will. Uh, Absolutely. So the first one is Saban. Mm-hmm. Uh, he's a 2 CP, 5K. When he attacks, choose a 4, deal it 2,000 damage. If you control Edgar, deal it 4,000 damage instead. Um, I mean, not really much to say here. It is common. It is a common. It, it plays well with cards like Godot. Um... I think what you're primarily going to see, obviously, this card is these, these cards are great in title. They're giving six a really nice boost in title, and I think really what you're going to see this guy do is be s fodder for the other Saban. Yeah, I think my biggest thing is I don't I don't know if it's worth doing that yet. Maybe, but like right now, I don't think Saban s is that great. It's decent, mm-hmm. but I'm probably not running four to six copies of Saban. No, um, I, I I don't think it's worth it. it. It is nice to see another save, and like I said I think oh, this yeah. is more of a title card. Like I said, it, I it does play well with Godot, which is nice. Yeah, I think I, I mean, I've been playing with Godot a lot, uh, and I just think there's better two CPs than this. I don't. Oh, there are. I don't 100%. need. I don't need an extra two K damage to swing up the curve, and the two K is not killing anything except unless you're playing Urian J. So like, and I'm exactly. not playing Edgar at least right now. I mean, maybe we get a new Edgar, right? But, mm-hmm. um. You know, I'm not playing the old Edgar with this, really, in, in that yeah. deck with Godot. Uh, yeah. So I, I'm pretty... But yeah, in title, I think he's fine. In title, yeah. you are playing Edgar. You, now you, you can have both Sabins on the field. You have six Sabins for a Saban yeah. special, which is better in title for sure right now. I, yep, I agree with that 100%. Um, so yeah, in title, I think he's great for sure. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then the next one is uh, a new Setzer. He's a 4CP mm-hmm. backup. EX Burst. When he enters the field, choose a Category 6 forward in your break zone and add it to your hand. 
Um, I, I think this card's fine. Um, I don't think it's going to be replacing the forward anytime soon. I just think the forward offers more utility. Um, but what this card does do, um, and this is, I think, its best quality. Uh, obviously, the, the card, the, the, the you look at Mono Ice or Earth Ice for this guy, because being able to get Dottalumas back and stuff is pretty good. Um, but also, those are, these can kind of coincide with Miners. It lets your Miners in that deck do other things, get other stuff. But the other big thing about this is, you know, when I see an ice backup that does something when it comes into play and then kind of sits there, it becomes great for a card like Kuja. Oh, yeah. Um, and, and that's really where I think a lot of the value is going to come from. Um, and Because I, I, I personally think Kuja is one of the best ice legendaries they printed just because the fact that he can, you know, for situations like this, you have this backup. It comes into play. All right, you get back your lock or, you know, you get back your, you know, you get back your Celis, or hell, you even get back a forward Setzer, and then you break it to Kuja and get the Kuja back too. Like you're able, just any kind of recursion, and then being able to just get that thing off the field feels good. Yeah, I think Kuja makes it, both of them playable in the same deck. Yes, I agree with that, and that's I guess that's the point I was getting at for sure. Um, and obviously, we're talking a, another fantastic title card for six, which is I think that seems to be the theme we're seeing so far. That they, I mean, they, they needed this; they 100 percent needed this in title. And I think some decks can benefit from this. In what capacity? I don't know. Maybe as a one of or a two of. I could easily see like a two forward, one backup split, or a one forward, two backup split. I don't know. Like there, there's a lot you could do with it. I think. Oh yeah, and yeah, like you said, the title. I think it's great. Yeah, I don't. I don't really have much more to say on this card. I, yeah, I think <clears throat> the deck you're playing this in standard has both Setzers and Kuja in it for sure. Yep. Because um, I don't think you're gonna just not play the other one. I agree. So, I mean, you could go like Setzer, get, like, if you already have Banana Sage, you get to play Setzer, you get this Setzer, mm -hmm. and then you can just swing with Setzer, and if they want to take the damage, like, fine, but if they don't, you know, if they do, then you can play this guy, get you know, another lock back, and then Mirage Dive, and I mean, there's a lot of things you can do. Yeah, I agree. I, th I think the card's good. I think the card is actually really solid. Yeah, and then, uh, next couple are a new, like, set of summons, I guess. Um, mm -hmm. So we're getting Final Fantasy Eleven summons. But they're uh, they're not great title cards. <laughs> no, no, because they're, they're pretty restrictive. Yeah. So uh, the first one's Leviathan. It's a three CP EX burst. Uh -huh. uh, choose one forward until end of turn. It loses a thousand power for each water character you control. Uh, man, I, I, there, I, I see a lot of people like kind of it, a lot of people really like this card, and a lot of people, I guess, on the fence. And I guess I'm kind of on the fence. And I think you and I talked about this before we started. Um, it's. I think it's insane that water's got like a piece of actual removal. Um, I think that's pretty insane. But it do, it does take a pretty established board for it to really. Um, obviously, yes, it does. It's a nice little combat trick. And you know, if you're playing Yuna, it costs two to do that. Um, but at, at that point, like I think Bismarck's just better if you're using it like that. And then if you're looking to kill something with it, I mean, you're really just doing that already with a card like Cloud of Darkness. So I think it's a good card, and I think it's like if you don't own Cloud of Darknesses, I think this is a good substitute. Like if you're kind of on a budget or you just can't get your hands on Cloud of Darkness, I think it's fine in that regard. But I don't know. I I, I don't know. I don't know where this card's going to see play. I I really truly don't. I I think it's good. I just don't know what changes. You know, for, for me, the the deck where this can potentially shine is mm -hmm. a mono water deck that doesn't run Yuna or Fasoya. Um, and oh, then, for sure. You can't run for Soya for so with this. Yeah, I mean, you can. You can, well, you can still build up the water cards. But, like, the thing is, it, would you, do you want to run this over the other potential stuff? Like, Choo Choo Lane's going to be better coming off the top because you get it for free and you get to draw a card. And a lot of times, that's going to be enough plus Fasoya to kill something. Yep. Maybe later in the game, Fasoya plus this kills two things. That could be decent, I guess. But, like, mm -hmm. at that point, like, you probably, you probably already are... Won. Exactly. Um... Mm -hmm. Do you want to run this or the Opus One Leviathan with Fasoya? That's like a lot of, or like the Opus Seven one as well. That's like a lot of people's like last uh, mm -hmm. tech slots. Um, yeah, I mean, I am, I'm not super sold on it. Uh, I think it's okay. I think the the best defense that was brought up to it to me is uh, it's good for the post Cloud of Darkness turn where mm -hmm. she's swinging mm -hmm. um, because a lot of times, unless you're just so far ahead. Um, you're not killing something with just the swing, right? So this plus mm -hmm. swinging is probably going to kill something. Right. Um, yeah, and then you can also respond to it, right? I mean, you're able to kill, like, the Laylos and Vikings to reduce the power on this, the power reduction on this card. 
Yep. And then, yeah, I mean, Yuna plus Chuchu Lane. Like, if you're playing Yuna, I think Chuchu Lane does better right now. And then also yeah, this... because it draws you a card. That's the big thing. Yeah, it draws you a card, and it's probably going to be enough of a combat trick to also still win you combat. You are reliant on uh, your opponent having dull things. Mm -hmm. uh, but usually that's not super hard. Yeah. Uh, and then also, you can't play this card in a deck that runs another element other than water. Yeah. I think that's Absolutely. my biggest thing. I don't think it's terrible or anything. I think it's actually pretty pretty good. I just think that there's so many other summons, it's going to be hard. I mean, may maybe, like, if you see more decks like what Colin Rupert was playing, where it's, like, no Fasoya. But he yeah. was running Yuna. I mean, I, I could see it in that deck. Mm -hmm. But other than that, like, th maybe unless something changes, I don't see this, yeah. like, being some instant 3 of or something in water decks. Yeah, I, I could see it as, like, I could see it being as, like, a 1 or 2 of somewhere. Like, cause, like I said, I feel like at that point where you're swinging with Cloud of Darkness and you know, you're. I, I feel like you're at a point with that where she's swinging and dulling something by like four, three or four k. You're probably in a really good spot. Oh yeah, usually if she gets to swing at all, like I, I, that was my counterpoint. Like if you get to the point where she gets to attack, you probably already won. Yeah. Us usually, true. um, and you could also do the same thing, that same line of play with a Bismarck. Yeah. Um, exactly. And Bismarck to me is more versatile than this card for sure. Uh, it's not you. It can't outright kill things, but usually, like with the conjunction of the other stuff that you're you're saying you're going to use with this card, it also does the same thing. Yeah. So. Yeah, I, I agree with that. I agree with those are all the points that where it puts me where I'm at in my position yeah. for sure. The only other thing that I'll say is uh, this is one of the few ways that with uh, that water can just straight up kill Yastola. Yeah. No, for sure, and that's huge. I think that I think the fact that water got like a piece of removal is like its best quality. Yeah. Uh, so the next summon is a, a new Ramu. Mm -hmm. It's a 4 CP EX burst. Choose an active 4, deal up 5,000 damage, and then 1,000 more damage for each lightning backup you control. Uh, I mean, obviously, I, I think it's fine, um, but I don't know what... I mean, are you replacing the Opus 7 Ramu or the uh, Opus 6 Ramu? Now, granted, it's Ramu, so it you, know, you, you immediately look at a card like Zapped and be like, well, I could toolbox one of these in maybe in the right deck. Yeah, um, I think... I don't think it's that great. Um, I mean, it definitely, like, keys into something that Lightning likes to do, which is build backups. Yep. Um, and you can theoretically hit 10k with this. Mm hmm But, like, I'm not running this over the other 3CP Ramu, and I'm probably not running this over the power reduction Ramu. Mm hmm um, Just because those are better. That one's better at all points in the game. Well, and, that, and that one also straight up kills your stola as well. Exactly. Yeah. The, the, yeah. This does nothing to your stola, mm -hmm. uh, and that's also an ex burst. And then even in decks where like you're doing like pingy stuff and then using this to finish the, like the one CP realm is probably better. Yeah, um, I agree with that. So I don't think this one's very good. I don't think it's terrible. Again, I think you could play this in a deck and kill things with it pretty mm -hmm. effectively. But I think that they're just better value summons. Yeah, there's other there's other summons named Ramu that I think just do the job better. Yeah, for sure. And and again, this this like early game is like not great. What are yeah. you what are you killing like Layla? Yeah, so uh, it feels great, right? <laughs> like yeah. Um, and then uh, and obviously you won't see these won't see really much play in title because all the eleven stuff is in like Earth and Fire. Yeah, and you're not gonna have those colors really, so you're not really gonna yeah. be able to take advantage of them. And then also, exactly. I don't really care much for these in limited either because a lot of your limited decks are gonna be dual color. I mean, maybe this Ramu's a little bit better than the Leviathan in limited, and the mm -hmm. Leviathan is, instead of being removal in limited is just a combat trick. That one hundred percent. So one hundred percent. Yeah, I mean they're not great limited cards. Mm -hmm. You're probably paying more for them in limited than you want to, but they're not super awful. But at least we know we're getting at least two summons for each element. Have um, we have we seen? Uh, well, oh, yeah, yeah, because this one, yeah, because Ramu and Raiden. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, yep. so we're going to get two summons, yep. Which is fine. Um, Lightning definitely got the short end of the stick on this one, this set. Oh, yeah, <laughs> but, for sure. I agree. <clears throat> but, you know, light, you know and, but Lightning's okay, I guess. They've got plenty of abilities and ping already, so I mean, they're fine. They don't really need any other – I don't think they really need any other summons, per se. Yep. Uh, and then the last Final Fantasy VI card in this, like, crop of is uh, Strago. So he's a 2CP mm -hmm. water backup. For water, uh, dull, put him into the break zone. She's a card named Realm, two or less, um, in your break zone, and play it onto the field. I mean, really not much to say about this card other than the fact that, A, if you're playing a monster deck with Realm, I think this is at least a two of, maybe even a three of, because I feel like you want to see it turn one. 
because being able to recycle your realms and monster decks feels fine. Um, it's like a super specific gladiator, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Um, and I think obviously it's, it's, you're probably not going to get any mileage out of it in title other than it being a two CP backup and it can help with Strago special, which you will definitely be doing in title with that deck. Um, I think the card's good. I think the card is great in the, it's clearly meant for a particular deck and in the deck that it's in, I think it's a great card. Yeah, it's it's not great in title, right? Like for the reasons you said, pretty much. I, yeah. I'd probably rather run a one CP backup in title over this, mm-hmm. unless unless you really want to bank on the Strago special for sure, because you're not playing yep. Realm in your title. Yeah, you're, exactly. Um, exactly. In monster decks, like I, I feel like uh, at least the you know recently ones, even if you look at Sam's list, um, Realm's not in there. Mm-hmm. Uh, but yeah, I mean if you're running Realm, I think you could run this. I think maybe. Because I, I know in like monster decks that I've been messing with at least mm-hmm. in this set, I've come down to like two realm. So mm-hmm. so maybe like you play, I would probably play like two realm in one of this or something. Yeah, because he, he pretty much acts as a, another copy of realm, and that's and that's where my mind is with it. I, mm-hmm. I think in a, if you're playing realm, I think he is at least a one, at least a one of inclusion. Yeah, I mean I I could see it. I just I don't know. I, I saw some people they're really happy about it, and I I mean I really enjoy monster decks too, but. Like, I don't know, Realm's just been kind of a little bit more lackluster for me because I feel like you have to run these higher, bigger, doofier monsters, right, for lack of a better word. Oh, you mean Big Dumpy? Yeah, so, like, I mean, yeah, she still gets you a value most of the time, but, like, her turning those things into 7Ks, I mean, there are some tricky things you can do with it, right, like with with Gigas, but it's not, like, the best. And I mean, she is a burst, which is nice, Mm -hmm. but a lot of times you're going to try to run these other value cards... That get you more, that do more stuff than her, I guess. Yeah, and and I just think because of you know a card like Ramu and the, the, the monsters just need to be bigger, forwards need to be bigger because you know just in those particular decks, and that's why you know cards like Zagnol and Big Dumpy are just better cards. Yeah. I mean, granted, Realm can peel them off the top when you reveal, but Realm's not really going to be doing much beyond that. Like she's, I, I guess she's kind of serves the same purpose as like a Viking. She's like, all right, I got something, and I'll block with her and get sure. rid of her. In, in so, mono water monsters, I think yeah, you hundred percent play this card. Yeah, a one hundred percent. So I think the card's fine, um, and obviously I'm always happy to see a new Strago on the uh, on the board. Yep. Uh, then the next spoiler was a uh, an ice backup. It's two CP Scholar, category fourteen, standard mm-hmm. unit. Uh, tap, put it in the break zone. Reveal the top card of your deck. If it's an ice card, add it to your hand. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think the card's good. Yeah, I think it's really good. Yeah, I like this card a lot. Um, it's, it literally just says tap, break, draw a card. Yeah, as long as you're playing Mono Ice. No, for sure. Oh, for uh, sure. You'll feel a little bad if you're playing like Galdus or Yuri, and that's your card. Yeah, but... feels, yeah, that'll feel bad. But then using that in like conjunction with Yule, like, oh, look at the top card. Oh, I want that. And then you'll just tap, break, and draw it. You know? Yeah, you could do that in like Ice X stuff. <laughs> in, in Mono Ice, I don't even think you have to run Yule. You just play this, and it's fine. Um, yeah. Yeah, I agree with that 100%. I think, I think, I think the card's good. And it's, and it's a 2CP backup, which is never bad. And I think... Ice could use some more like solid two CP backups. Yeah, and it has no additional cost. I think that's the thing that puts it over the top for me. Like it's just a tap and a break. Like you don't have to pay like an ice, like even like one ice or two ice or anything like that. You just tap and break. Yeah, I think it's I think it's a good card. Yeah. I think it's just a solid solid card all across the board. Yeah, I think if mono ice is is good in this set, you'll see this card. <clears throat> mm-hmm. Oh, for sure, one hundred percent. So one hundred percent. And then the last one is um uh, Graham. He's a uh, 5 CP Earth Forward, uh, Dark Knight, Category FFL, 9K. Uh, when he's put from the field to the break zone, choose one forward opponent controls. If you've received four points of damage or more, break it. I think this card's kind of neat, actually. Um, like, granted, yeah, he costs five, so, you know, obviously. But, but also, too, it's like one of those things, like, you play this guy in the late game, it's like, all right, go ahead and Diabolus it. Yeah. Because that's going to, because I'm going to kill something else. And then, like, I think it's just neat that you could like hecaton chair something, trade with it, it'll die, and then you kill something else too. Like I, I, I think it has some neat lines for like the late game. Mm-hmm. Um, I just don't know where it's going to see play. I think that's kind of thing because I mean, obviously you have you know, Earth already has cards like Asmo died, which is I think a solid card as well. But granted, I think Graham could fit in in like an Earth X deck where you're not necessarily you know you don't have nothing but Earth backups to really get the value out of Asmo die. Um, you know, I don't know. Maybe him being a legend, Final Fantasy Legends is good because if you're playing like Earth Lightning, you can get it back with. Because uh, can't you get a Legends card back with uh, Diana. what's your name, yeah. Diana? So, <clears throat> like, I, I think there's some neat lines with him. I just don't know where you know where he's gonna fall. 
Yeah, uh, the place that I'm thinking of, like, and I don't know how great he is, is, is Fire Fire Earth, probably. Because mm-hmm. you can. Oh yeah. They, you know, they're having that theme where they're trying to get to five, and so this gives you payoff at four, I guess, even though he costs five. Oh man, play this guy in Jet. That's six CP. You got two bodies on the four on the board. Yeah. After four damage. Yeah, that could be decent. And then yeah, I mean, if you, you have to be like really careful about removing this guy unless you have a way to actually remove him from the game. Because uh, yeah, he's absolutely. gonna take something with him. He's probably gonna take two things with him because he's a nine k. So, mm-hmm. you know. Yeah, and that's really why I like him. Um, and that's just the fact that he he's a two for one machine. I just I, I just see you playing this guy after you hit that four damage threshold, and then he he does he becomes a scary card. Like not you know it's people are like well for two more CP you could play Arden. No you no you can't. Like Arden's not gonna take something out with him. Like I think this guy just straight up you you can take two you just take two things out with him is so huge to me. I think people don't realize how much two CP is too. That's a lot. Like the difference between oh, five and seven is a lot. Yeah. Um, it's huge. It's absolutely huge. So I don't know I, I like I, I actually do like this card a lot. I do. I really, really do. And I think I think it has some neat lines. Like I, I think it's just a just a good late game like hold the line kind of thing, you know? Sure, yeah. I think like I said, I think he's decent, and I think he's good in uh in limited also. Oh no, for sure, absolutely, because like you said, he's he's most more than likely gonna take two things out with him. Yeah, especially so. in limited, even more in, even more likely in limited that he does that. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. And uh, with that being said, you know, I, I think it, we've we've seen some really good spoilers so far, and a lot of these cards, you know, some of them are higher costed, some of them feel like they're worth it, some of it don't, and that that's that's kind of what's gonna take us into our main topic here or kind of like we, we kind of have a dual topic going on but i think the main topic is what makes a card worth its cost and you know i think we thought about this because you know arden has kind of been the one that you know in the last week or so people have been talking about whether it's it, you know people have been using the b word calling it broken um whereas i personally think it's not worth the seven you're paying for i think it's the other b word uh, uh, bullshit or just bad, bad. <laughs> And then, uh, but then, I, but then I look at a card like Graham that costs five, and I, I think that's a card that's completely worth his cost if you play him at the right point in the game. Yeah, I think he's average, right? Like, I think he's like kind of worth five, but he's not like some. Mm-hmm. He's not like so. There's there's a difference in like card power, and I think if you watch uh, mm-hmm. Matiski's video on like how he deck builds and stuff, you can see mm-hmm. like his like thought process. So it's like you have cards that are like obvious build arounds, right? And they, those cards need to be unfair. You need to find yep. like. An unfair card that does something for way more than what it actually is costed, and that's what you build your deck around, and you use interactions with that card that are unfair. Dotaluma is a big example, right? The Dotaluma, but Dotaluma by himself is like kind of unfair, mm-hmm. but Dotaluma with like Cactuar and other things is like really unfair. Oh yeah, it goes from unfair to oppressive very quickly. Yeah, so like those cards are kind of in their own league. Uh, those cards are like worth, like they're netting you CP basically because like eventually they're like. Dotaluma plus Cactuar might cost five together, but they're together are going to probably kill like m- the multiple forwards and make up for their oh, cost. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Um, they, they, they make their money back immediately. And it's why you hear, yeah, and it's why you hear a lot of people talking about like, you know, you need cards to have these immediate effects on the board to be worth it, even if they're understated, right? And so when you see cards like Arden who don't do anything to the board the turn he comes out, mm-hmm. he's literally just a card. He's a carder, you play it, and then. You look at your opponent and you're like, answer this. That's kind of like where he's at, but he mm-hmm. costs seven. Mm-hmm. So it's like, and I mean, yeah, he can't be broken, so that limits your answers a little bit. But you mm-hmm. can also just move him out of the way. And if you move a seven CP out of the way and you get no value for spending seven, that that loses it you. The, it loses you the game most of the time. And, and then it goes back to you know the, what you can what what you the player do what can do to move him out of the way. Like, all right, cool. I just. I broke this three CP searcher back up, and now I get to play it again and search for another card. And meanwhile, your seven CP is just sitting there doing nothing. You know what I mean? Like, I, I just, I, I don't think the card's worth it in that regard. And yeah, yeah I agree with you one hundred percent. Like having a card that is that that you know, you know, Dotaluma cards like Yuri, these these build around cards that are pretty unfair. I mean, yeah, and let, let's compare Arden to another seven CP that sees play right now, right? Separate, mm-hmm. right? Sephiroth does something the turn he comes out, yep. immediately makes you discard two cards, and that feels terrible. On top of that, he has a special that he can do the same turn if he wishes to, uh, and even if you like move him out of the way, he can still do those things just on yep. his card alone. 
Um, if you remove him and you play it, the thing is when you remove a card that has ETBs, you have to fear the fact that they might have another one. Yep. And do the same thing to you again. If you if you kill an Arden, and you spend seven CP on another Arden, like mm-hmm. while that's decent because now I have to answer another Arden. Like, that's still, you've spent 4 CP, and Arden hasn't done anything. You mean 14. You spent 14 CP. Oh, did I, what, is, what did I say? I meant to say 14. You said, you said 4. I figured okay. that's where you were going, yeah. but still. But still, and he hasn't done a damn thing. You're yeah. Absolutely right. So it's like, if, if, I, if you kill a Sephiroth before he gets to swing, and I play another okay. Sephiroth, you've discarded 4 cards. Mm-hmm. Plus whatever you use to kill Sephiroth. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's a big deal. Uh, whereas, like, Arden, like, really, if you just have the one card answer to him, you spent one card. Yep. You know, and, and Arden didn't do anything. Mm-hmm. Um, the only difference is Arden, you know, hit, while his answers are a little bit more limited, and if you don't have an answer, he's going to put you on a kind of a clock. He, but the thing is, he's a 7 CP clock. Like, that's mm-hmm. that's a that's an expensive clock. Like. Yeah, it's it's a grandfather clock. They're nice to look at, but they don't you don't they're not necessary. Yeah, and you know it, it goes to other stuff too. Like it's not just the seven cost, whereas but like other things too. Like it, it, you can even compare him to like another seven CP in the set, which, which is Dark Fina, right? She mm-hmm. gets you immediate value when yep. she comes into play, and that, I mean that's the only reason why I think she has pretty good upside. Uh, mm-hmm. Depending on if people can find things to like break her off. I mean Phoenix is the obvious play, but like absolutely, um, she does something when she comes into play, and she's an she has the same body that Arden has she just doesn't have the brave and she doesn't have that text that she can't be broken mm-hmm. um but and then and then even if you um what am I trying to say here um and not just a, a card with him right like a card like Arden if you, you can just kind of work your way down the CP scale if a card is worth like uh, we were talking earlier when we were talking about the Saban spoiler um he's a 2 CP 5k that just doesn't do enough when you're yeah. talking about him being in like mono fire decks like well there's no reason to play him at all when you have the cards like the two CP Warrior of Light. Yeah, I mean you could you could compare him to every two CP in that deck, right? And and why he why he wouldn't make the cut over any of them in my opinion right now. Um, Although for sure, it, it's not even close. Yeah, it's not see, even close. yeah. You got Warrior of Light who's way too versatile, like best Phoenix target in the deck for sure. Mm-hmm. Um, he's gonna boost all your dudes and and potentially get haste, and he's his and his job title matters. Yep, and you've got Soul who another one his job title matters. Yeah. He's got haste. He's you know. And the fact that both of these guys are going to have Brave if you play them off an Aegis. Uh, yeah, you can play Saban off of an Aegis, but you're just like, eh, like, yeah. why? Yeah, and then, like, him being a 7K that deals 2K on swing, like, that's that's not whatever. Like, I can get... Ephemeral can be a 9K swinging, which to me is more important. He's less likely to trade. Yep. Um, you know, e- even, yeah, then cards like Furion are doing things on entry. Uh, mm-hmm. Saban has to swing, even though, like, it's pretty easy to give him haste in that deck. But like, right, so, yeah, it's just like he he's not doing enough in comparison mm-hmm. to the other stuff. The only thing that could make him semi relevant maybe is like a monk deck or something. But I, I don't I don't know. Right, we're we're, we're digging into jank, uh, meme and jank territory here. But no, like like really at the end of the day, what it boils down to is, you know, especially right now, the way the game is right now, and the way the game is shaping up, you know, cards need to have the ability to do something the minute they come in. Yeah. You, know, you know, and again, going back to a card like Yuri, oh yeah, you're, you're not you're you're very rarely going to tap out to play Yuri. The only time you'll ever do that is maybe if you have another one in your hand and you're just trying to bait out the removal. Or you have to, like if you yeah. absolutely have to, yeah. Right, but more times than not, when you play Yuri, you're going to be able to use one of his abilities the minute he comes out. Uh, Dotaluma, chances are when you play him, you're either a just setting up the defenses, or you've got a couple, or your uh, a cactar's coming down right behind him, or two of them are coming down right behind him. So. The, these these cards that don't necessarily have something that they're doing right off the bat have something they can do that can be pretty just game breaking. Paying seven for an Arden and then Hecaton sharing something that you've spent nine CP. Really, you spent eleven because you spent seven and then two for the Hecaton. You've pitched two for the Hecaton chair and then you've actually pitched the Hecaton chair. So like that's not really a you know a ball breaking play there because you've probably dumped your hand and spent all of your resources at that point. Yeah, I mean, if, if <laughs> he he costs seven, he should do things that like completely change the way the game is, and like that's why like I think he reads well with his first two abilities. But the problem is like, and I mean, mm-hmm. I don't want to spend a whole like the entire time on Arden, but like he, he's just a perfect example of what we're talking about. Yeah, he just I don't know, like I, I shouldn't have to spend more CP to to do other things with him. That's that's yeah. the thing. 
Yeah, like you look at a card, like again, look at a card like Graham. Again, we're talking another pretty, you know, medium card until you get to like the later half of the game. You spent your five. He's on. He's an on curve body, which is nice. And then when he dies, he's going to do something. Um, I think that's better than Arden personally. But then you look at a card like another, you know, higher end card like again, Sephiroth is another perfect example. Like you said, he's doing something immediately. You spent your seven, and you've actually cost your opponent CP. You know, by playing him as well. So really, if you look at it like that, your opponent's having pitch for CP you you essentially you're you've played him for three if you're looking at like a trade value kind of thing yeah and then on top of that Sephiroth has more text after that like whenever he yeah. swings if they don't have cards in the hand he's going to dull and free something as well and that's something you have to think about you can't just pitch your hand to deal with other stuff or try to like block Sephiroth on board because then he's just going to move something out of the way every turn yeah like he's going to move Arden out of the way <laughs> yeah I mean Great. another card that like I, I know like you you thought it was pretty good and I was pretty medium on it at first and now I Neither one of us are really playing it. Is uh, the old legend Gallif, right? Yeah. I mean, that's kind of similar to this too, ex- except for he's easier to deal with on your opponent's turn. Mm-hmm. But like yeah, he, he kind of reads the same way. Yeah, he can't be broken. He just doesn't have brave, and he has extra text. He doesn't have the drawback, but he has like the S, right? And he has the uh, mm-hmm. the two earth that can force the block. Mm-hmm. Uh, and he doesn't see any play. Nope. Outside yeah, of title. Yeah, and you might catch him in like a you might catch him as like a one of fun of and like somebody playing a deck that oh, i want to play dawn warriors or i'm trying this and we'll see what he's all about but usually he's not you're, you're sitting down at a tournament and your opponent has yellow cards you're you're not going to see a gallop yeah more you're than likely not. yeah yeah, yeah. But, and then i mean if we want to dive into summons too like there that it's there as well and i think we could talk about a card that i, I mean i could possibly be wrong, be wrong about leviathan right because i think the upside to leviathan is uh there's no there's no cap on it right yeah so Absolutely. like even though it costs three CP, it, it's not always like usually the sweet spot is three CP seven K, right? Like that's the mm-hmm. the power reduction it would be, but it can go above seven, which is that's I think that's where it might shine. Is mm-hmm. like when you can consistently get to the point where you're paying three or two with Yuna and mm-hmm. You're hitting you're, for like nine K, eight, yeah, nine K. Yeah, you're killing five CPs, right? And you're making yeah, out on good. the card. Um yeah. and so I think summons have to get they have to have value in like what they're killing. Um, even, sometimes you don't mind spending one more CP on a summon than they did on a four, depending on the target. But a lot of times you want to net CP on your summon, which is why Diabolus is so dumb. Yeah. Right. Be- you, 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 all you do is net CP on that card. Yeah. It's, it's basically for It's, it's either kill, a, kill a forward for free. This is basically what the card reads, right? It's kill a forward for free or a kill a, kill a five CP for free or make a four K a one C one CP for free and then ping him down and kill him. With one yep. of the things that you untapped, yep. oh, and then or um, kill two things, and then you know pay five, <laughs> like mm-hmm. like that's kind of where the card is at. And then you have a card like Valifor, right, where it nets you CP, which is why the card is so dumb. Yep, uh, because it's two, and then it untaps five. Mm-hmm. So essentially, if you play it right, you're gonna net three CP every time you play it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, yeah. that's what you have to compete with. To be good, yeah, and, and and it just goes back to the way the game is. We're just talking about just good, efficient. That's why that's why a card like Starter Pain has been good since the beginning of the game. Yeah, cause she nets you if you play her off both Riku and Yuna. She nets you two CP yeah. when you play her. Yeah, and, and it really that that at the end of the day, like that's just that's just what it is. Now, granted, I know I think there's some cards that don't do something immediately. Like I know that one of the big controversial cards is uh minwoo the backup minwoo where it's like uh he doesn't he doesn't move the board state along he doesn't do anything to you know push the game he doesn't help you win he just kind of helps you not lose so yeah and so the argument for backups is i think backups to an extent can afford to do that Mm -hmm. i think summons and forwards have a way harder time yeah, they need to have an immediate impact. Like a card like Wool. Let's go back to another you know, card that is a total impact player and will be until the, the day the game dies. You look forward like Wool. He comes into play, you're using his ability, and something's either getting through or you're – like if you're against a, a deck that primarily runs off of EX Burst. Like, for example, the big doofy Earth deck. You play Wool, they don't have an answer for that. You've just shut down half of their deck. Yeah, and I mean let's compare it to a card that's in that same set, right? Vaughn, right? Mm-hmm. Yep, Vaughn is it's kind of similar, but he he can't do it the turn he comes out. Now, if Vaughn's able to swing, Vaughn's really really good. Mm-hmm. But Vaughn has to. The reason Vaughn doesn't see play is because, well, number one, he's a light card that is slow. Yep. 
And he's also a light card, not named Yuri. Yeah, which is huge. Yeah, so yeah, you can't really play them both at the same time because you're probably not playing two light fours in a deck. Um, mm-hmm. but yeah, I mean, but if she, but if he does get the swing, he's amazing, right? Yeah, oh, absolutely. But he's just it, it's a, it's just like when Arden gets to do something, and if he has a turn that he can live. Uh, and but you know another another great example of you know kind of on the opposite side of that you know Cloud of Darkness is one that comes in has an immediate effect and then does stuff afterwards too. Yep. So like. I guess you can kind of see where we're going with this. Um, it seems like, you know, for a card to really, really shine, especially just in the way the game is played right now, being able to have some sort of entry effect that does change the state of the board. I, I really, I think really the only, oh, I don't want to say an exception, because I feel like a card like Yastola does do something when oh, she comes she, into play. Oh, she 100% she, affects the board when she comes into play. She doesn't sail yeah. on a card, but like... When you when she, when you play her, her eyes. yeah, her <laughs> yeah, when you play her, her your opponent has to immediately change the, whatever his plan was probably changed. Yep. So that's very very true. So and there's just there's just it's just a different it's in the pecking order, right? Like you can like you know you look at cards like these legendaries like you know like Yastola, like Cloud of Darkness. These, these are cards that immediately do something. Even a card like Zemus isn't that great these days because you have to wait a turn. Yeah, his payoff I think is worth that. He's one of the he's one of the few examples where I do think his payoff is worth it. Sure. Um, there and there are a few. There aren't many. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I mean he's a card that literally his text can't be used for the turn he comes out unless you give him haste. Mm-hmm. Um, but What's he. Spot? He is a card that, like, you, you pay 4-4, four, four, and I think 4 is, like, a little bit of a sweet spot. Like, you can get away with some 4 and sure. 3 and 2 CPs that don't do a lot when they mm-hmm. come into play if they have a payoff. Um, mm-hmm. But when you get to 5, 5 is where a card has to, like, it has to do something. Yep. And that's why a card like the uh, the old Cecil doesn't see, the old uh, Water Cecil Legendary doesn't really see much play anymore because he's just not really doing anything. Anymore. He's not really doing anything, and Yastola is just, like, better. Yeah. It's She's, just... Yeah. And she's yeah. cheaper too, so yeah, it's it's it just it's just really at the end of the day that's that's just just the direction the game is going. As I've said you know, a couple times already, you know these are the type of cards you need to really you know just kind of push your advantage and play. Even like if you're playing a controly shell, having cards that do something when they come out to set your opponent further back is what's important. Yeah. So. So and then so I mean, that that's really what we think it makes takes to make a card worth its cost or you know just just worth what it's printed worth the paper it's printed on, but also too while we're talking about what makes things good, what does it take in this game, Adam, to make a good tribal synergy? Yeah, I mean that's hard, right? So I feel like mm-hmm. I feel like the best the best they've done right is, is Zion's, right? Sure. And then sure. And Warriors of Light. Play- getting real close yeah and i feel like but where is lights a weird one right because it, i feel like there's so many different ways to play it mm-hmm. um i mean they have synergies with each other but like i feel like when you're playing a, a two element version it could be different from another two element version you have like the four element version um mm-hmm. i can't really compare it to a lot of stuff that i've played in other card games maybe like my like Small stint with Magic in high school. I don't know if you remember, like, I think Slivers were a thing, right? Oh, uh, yeah, I remember Slivers. Yeah, that, oh, yeah. It reminds me of that, kind of, where it's like mm-hmm. you have all these cards that are across all the elements, and they do stuff mm-hmm. with each other, but you're probably not playing all the elements together. Right. Yeah, you're usually playing two. Maybe maybe you're splashing a third one from, yeah. like, a dual land or something. No, and, no, 100%. Yeah, and to me, the best one is, is a one-element version, right? I mean, I, I, in my opinion, I'm sure other people can argue. Oh, no, I, 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 if, you, if you look at all the Warrior Light decks, the Mono Fire one is probably the best one. Yeah, uh, but yeah, I think Scions is probably the one they've. But I don't know. It, it, people don't like them to an extent because they build themselves, right? Mm-hmm. Like these tribal decks, like you just see the synergy that's like the best, and the, that's what you play to that. And so mm-hmm. for Scions, it's like I'm gonna play Yida, and mm-hmm. then she and Yastola. Those are my payoff cards. And yep. so, like, how do I... And then you have a card that, like, searches for Yida. Then you have a backup that searches for whatever sign you have. And then you're mm-hmm. just playing Thancred because he's harder to kill. Like, yeah, he's just kind of there. He's pretty good, but, like, you know, he's just... Yeah. Which I, I think in this day and age, I think the uh, the common Thancred might actually be better than the uh, the heroic one. Eh, I still like the H. But, yeah, and then, and then Ali says, obviously, your payoff, too, right? Like, Oh, for sure. Yeah. So... Um, so it sounds like in this game, like to have a dedicated tribal deck, you need the because a perfect example is you know class uh, type zero cadets like they just don't have like a payoff card. Yeah, I think they they have like all these synergies and stuff, and the problem is too like their synergies are across multiple like three colors to get 
the synergies yep, that you want. Yeah, they're searchers in one color. They're anthems in another color. Uh, they have another anthem in another. Other, um, their big beefy forwards are in that third color. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, I 100% agree that that's yeah. that's not a tribal synergy that you can really. Yes, you can play it. I think it's just, I think it's a good, fun, casual deck and a great budget deck as well. But yeah. and then also one of their big payoff cards is a light card, which is a problem. Yeah. Yep. Now, granted, it does feel good that when you're like, all right, when you play Ace King, you know that that does feel good until it's like, well, all right, we'll Diabolos that, and then we'll do that you know it's just um and the fact that like you said you if you're limiting to one or two colors you're missing out on like the other parts of what makes that tribe function well you know the funny thing you know how their synergies aren't like that great i mean they're they're like on paper they read fine but mm-hmm. when you really like when you really realize that their synergies aren't good enough is when you play them yep. in title and they still have trouble winning Oh yeah, one hundred percent. Because you're not limited by playing color, and they're just like, oh, we're just not big enough. Oh, we just can't do enough. And yeah. all of those cards just have a lot of words on them that are just just wasted. Yeah, I, mean, I think also to be fair to them, a little bit in title is um, a, a lot of things are hard to target, and they rely on targeting things. No, that's also fair. That so, is a very fair assessment. So maybe if that was like the case, they'd be a little bit better. But still, they do struggle in title as well, and mm-hmm. and there is no element restriction there. That's um, true. So I guess where we're going with this, you know, we're not just rambling about, you know, tribal. I guess, Adam, what we're going, where we're going with this is what is it going to take to make Turks a viable tribe? Well, so, so far it's only been in one element. Uh, so, mm-hmm. and when I, when I, when I, when I'm talking about tribal, I'm not talking about just like some package. Like YRP is not tribal to me. No, it's a package. YRP yeah. is like a package in a deck. Um, oh. F- FFCC is not tribal to me. It's a package mm-hmm. in a deck. Um, yep. I think there's a few tribals that they seem to be pushing in this, and I think seven category seven seems to be getting a push, mm-hmm. and Turks seem to be getting a push mm-hmm. uh, as far as tribals in this set so far. And maybe I'm missing one. Correct me if I'm wrong. But uh, no, that's I mean that's really all I see. I mean, obviously, uh, Warriors of Darkness, maybe. Yeah, but to me, that seems right now seems like a package because I think mm-hmm. there's only like four cards. So yeah it's gonna depend on if they get other stuff yeah well i think there's one more card coming which would be the fourth one and that we uh, that we've seen in, based on what i've seen in chapters yeah um and i think that's I th- probably we, we may have seen the art for it already too. i think we did yeah i think it was shown yeah. as part of that like fanfare art yeah uh but like i think rufus is a good start like he he obviously like wants you to play other turks he does something uh-huh. with the other turks and he searches and he's a burst um mm-hmm. for me rude is really meh like Rue mm-hmm. reminds me of, like, kind of Cryo, but a little better, maybe. Like, mm-hmm. he does more than she does. Mm-hmm. But, like, you know, I mean, I guess, like, the plus 1k, I think that's that one of his abilities, right? Like, tap for plus 1k or something to a turn. Uh, I believe so. Yeah, so that's pretty decent. Like, Cryo can't do that. But his special is, like, I, I don't see you playing that a lot of games. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I'm interested to see, like, what Reno needs to do something and needs to be a forward that does something good, I think. And then they also need probably, like, probably three or four other turks for me to really consider them like a full tribal deck and it, and they have to all be good mm-hmm. uh, yeah like the, yeah and that's the thing like like to really have like a proper tribe like not only do you need just a, a decent amount of forwards and i think that's what people are forgetting like you know you need to have you don't necessarily have to have every forward in the deck be that particular tribe but the majority of them do need to be you know like like knights for example like you can build a knight's deck and not have everybody in the deck be a knight like another i think another great tribal deck right now is one that john and dan are playing the knights and princes like that's you know i I would i would consider that a tribal deck that's borderline for me but yeah i mean i it's close but to me they all they all rely on that job synergy they need to be a knight they need to be a prince but there's nothing that says. I mean, well, they are running Avalia in the back line, which is an anthem. They for took knights. they took that out. Did they? Okay. Yeah, they ran. They're running Summoner in that in that card's place now. Okay, nice. So yeah, so I mean, yeah, it's. I think still it has tribal synergies in it, but it's not like you know yeah. nothing. It's not everything's revolving around being a knight, though. It does a lot of the stuff does revolve around being a knight or a prince. Yeah, so. and I mean, there that this game has a lot of stuff like that. I think. Mm-hmm. Uh, but yeah, I mean that one's really close to me. I, I would probably consider it not one, but it it, it is close. Um, yeah, and, and even Scions took a set to be good, right? Like, I mean, they were decent the set they came out. They were okay, but as soon as they printed like Yestola, 
Yeah. And uh, Cryo was mm-hmm. when, like, like everybody started playing them. Yep, and they're still good. Turns out they're still really good. Yeah, because before yeah, they, got- they had a, they they would brick a lot on Earth, and so Cryo mm-hmm. helped them play a Scion that backup that was Earth, even though her ability is mostly irrelevant. Um, yep. And then Yastola gave them another payoff card that's that wasn't Yita. Mm-hmm. Um, and so you'd have to be forced to kind of like now you have six cards you have to use your removal on in that deck, mm-hmm. and they both have haste. Yep. So. Yeah, so it, it just sounds like to make a good tribal synergy, it, it just needs a lot of moving parts, um, and it needs to it, it needs to be cards that are dedicated to those particular jobs and just those particular synergies, yeah. which which isn't hard to do, but making them like, and I don't want to always say that you know every every card you make and every deck you build has to be competitive, but I, I think to do, to do it so you don't feel frustrated because even if you're playing a casual like. Like, if you're playing, like, cadets casually, if you're losing all the time, you're not going to have fun, even in a casual environment. So they have to be good enough. Yeah. I mean, I'm speaking... Yeah, I'm speaking mostly from a competitive aspect, for sure. Uh, I think you need need to have multiple cards that give you a reason to run all the tribe, you know, the tribal cards. So, like, for for Scions, it's it's Yida, Yastola, Alisei. Like, and Alisei's the big one. She's number one. Like, she's the reason you're playing the deck, and then Yida's one of your payoff cards, and Yastola's one of your payoff cards, and then you're just going to play the other Scions that do yep. their stuff. Like, and then, you, and then it gets to a point where you're playing Scions because their job is Scions, right? Like, Al- Alpha No and um, Cryle really only see play uh, because of their job. Yep. Uh, and and yeah. then, you know, just to talk about another tribe, you know, you know uh, Barbara for dragoons was a huge addition. Give, being, being able to give them haste and give the give your forwards a, a again another payoff card. I think is you know giving the tribe a payoff card. I think is really really huge as well. Yeah, I guess you could put standard units in here too, uh, but I, I don't know. I think that's a little bit cheating, kind of. Yeah, standard <laughs> units is a little bit rough because they they I don't know. Well, no, I mean, well, I guess Te- technically they count. Like you could argue for it, and I can't really like argue against it. But for me, like in in this. It, in Final Fantasy, I don't really consider that a tribe. Just be, just because I don't, I don't really have much of a better reason than that. It's just, uh, yeah. You know. Well, uh, I, I, in the scope of a card game, they're a tribe. But as far as like Final Fantasy goes, they're not. You know. Yeah. So like for me, Rufus is a very good start, but they need probably to have two other cards that are just like powerful because I'm playing other Turks. Yeah. Yeah. R- Reno needs to have a good payoff. I think Elena needs to have a good payoff. Yeah, and then they probably need like one or two other backups too. Yeah, they they would need to make like a, a Vincent ver like a Turk version of Vincent, and I don't I don't really know much about like the extended lore. I don't know if there are other Turks. There's that they a could ton do. of them. There they okay. they did they, they had a whole mobile game if they want to go that far, okay. uh, where there's like probably like I don't know at least twenty. Well, then they would definitely need to do that to make that you know make it a, a tribe worth you know. But just in the in exploring. the main game, you have a Duff. I think to make it playable, like they have just mm-hmm. as many as you would have scions. Mm-hmm. Like you got Reno, Rude, uh, Rufus, Sung, Elena, uh, mm-hmm. and then yeah, I guess you could throw like an old Vincent in there if you want. Yeah. So. Yeah. So they're, I think they're there, and you know, and you guys tell me what you think. You know, sound off in the comments on whatever platform you listen to us on. Let us know what you know. What do you think it takes to make a good tribal synergy, or tell us what it takes to make a card really worth its cost. But I don't know. other than that, Adam, I, I've got nothing else this week. There's a lot. Uh, you know, we got our the first uh, Germany Crystal Cup is next week, so we'll have something to take a look at and something to talk about. You know, as far as you know, the, the beginning of the, the 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 race to worlds, as it were. Yep. Yeah, I don't have anything else to say either. Really. Yeah. No. Well, guys, as I said, sound off in the comments. Let us know what you think. Uh, we will have the uh, the change my mind uh, Noel video should be out this week as well. Um. That one was a little bit more difficult to make because, um, believe it or not, like the good outweighs the bad. Just the bad is bad, if that makes sense. Oh yeah, I mean, I, I could I could go on for a while, but I'll just hold my tongue on that. But like, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's he's got good. He's, he he got he's got good talking points, but then like when you see like the bad is just bad, and you're like, ugh, that's bad. Yeah. So that's kind of where I was with that. But yeah, but yeah, you guys check out the video when it comes out. You know, always check out our YouTube channel for any other videos we got coming up. You know, we're getting back in the habit now of you know trying to get stuff out you know regularly 
But, you know, otherwise, you know, thanks for listening as always. Adam, I've got nothing else. Do you have anything else? No, I'm good. Cool. Well, tip of the hat, friends. We'll see you all next week. Uh, see you later. Hey, everybody. Thanks for listening once again to the RVA Returners podcast. If you like this content and you want to hear more, check us out on YouTube at RVA Returners. And make sure you follow us on SoundCloud and check us out on Google Play and iTunes.